Hi, my name is Yin Gao and welcome to Dr. Gao's classroom. I'm a professional philosopher and I love classic Chinese poetry. I have been translating Chinese poetry for the last three years with a colleague of mine and I'd love to share my knowledge on the subject with you. Your enjoyment is my command. So today I'm going to talk about the relationship between two greatest Chinese poets of all time. They are Li Bai and Du Fu. So if you want to know more about Li Bai, I have done two videos on Li Bai. You can check out my channel and find out this, what happened to Li Bai and who he is. The two of them used to be very close, at least Du Fu thought so. <laughs> they sent each other lots of poems and Du Fu read lots and lots of poems praising Li Bai's uh, poetic talent and also recalling the fun time they had together. And even after Li Bai passed away, Du Fu wrote lots of poems to commemorate Li Bai. So I'm going to divide the talk for two parts. So today I'm just going to talk about all the poems that uh, Du Fu wrote about Li Bai. I can't talk a lot of them, so I'm just going to pick two uh, excerpts from Du Fu's poem, because usually Du Fu's poems is very, very long. So I'm going to talk um, about two pieces of it. And then um, in my next video, I'll talk about two poems Li Bai sent to Du Fu. So if you're new to my channel, please check out my introduction to classical Chinese poetry and the two videos I did on Du Fu. I would also do lots of other videos on classical Chinese poetry. If you like the contents of my video, please subscribe my channel. now. Let's go back to Du Fu. Du Fu is born at 712 AD. He was 11 years younger than Li Bai. So unlike Li Bai, you know, Li Bai was born into a merchant family. That's why he couldn't sit in the civil service examination. But Du Fu was born into a scholar official family. His grandfather was known to be a, a great poet and he was a high rank official and his father was a magistrate of a county. So he naturally sit in the civil service examination, but he failed both time. So by the time he met with Li Bai in 744, Li Bai was already, you know, very well known a poet. He had established his reputation as a poet and he just quit his job from the court. When Du Fu uh, met Li Bai, he already heard a lot about Li Bai and Li Bai was the idol of him. He was just so amazed by Li Bai's talent. So Li Bai's experience was very um, amazing. It was sort of regarded as a amazing successful story. You know, there's a saying in the Tang Dynasty that uh, you could be a farm boy in the morning, but you can be in the court of the uh, the emperor by the evening. This is how you know successful Li Bai was. You know the saying is "Zhao wei tian she lang, mu deng tian zi tang," means that uh, once you were recognized by the uh, emperor, well, you could become a high rank official without sitting in the civil service examination and and you know climbing the bureaucratic rank gradually. So during the autumn in 744, Li Bai quit his job and he invited, the, um, after they met for the first time, they, uh, Li Bai invited Du Fu to join him for a tour at the Sanxi and Henan province. And of course, Li Bai was not only very rich, he was also given a huge sum of money by the emperor as his fund of retirement. So Li Bai had a lot of money and, and he wasn't with a tight hand. He was very extravagant. So he probably paid for all expenses when they were traveling. So imagine you are a, you know, inspired young singer and you're a great fan of Michael Jackson. And then he invited you for a tour and also cover all your expenses. How would you feel about that? I mean, you know, that, that's how um, Du Fu feel about Li Bai. So he composed many, many poems to praise Li Bai. You know, they, they never see each other after the two meetings um, in 744. So even like nearly 20 years later, when Li Bai was on exile, Du Fu read lots of poems recalling the fun time they had. And today, I, I'm, the first piece of the expert I cited from is in the title of 
20 rhyme the couplets for Li the 12th by uh, in Chinese is Ji Li Sir by Er Shi Yun. So it's like a 40 lines of poem. I'm just going to choose like a few lines from that. So this is a very long poem and Du Fu was first make a case that how extraordinary Li Bai's poetic talents was and how wonderful he was and generous as a friend and followed by, you know, Li Bai, how innocent he was to be implicated in the uh, Prince Li Lin's uh, conspiracy against the Crown Prince. If you want to know that story, you can check out my uh, video on Li Bai's life story. So finally, he, he sort of concluded, you know, uh, the new emperor could pardon Li Bai because he's just innocent. So I'm just going to, um, choose like a, a few couplets from this poem to show how much Du Fu admire Li Bai's poetic talents and appreciate their friendship. So if you're interested in reading the whole poem, you can contact me, I list my email down below. Or if you're interested in reading any other classic Chinese texts such as philosophy or traditional Chinese medicine, you can also contact me because I offer one-to-one -one online license. We can read those together. So now let's let's just look at the the poem. Xi nian you kuang ke, hao er zhe xian ren. So this is the first couplet. So Xi is past, nian is year, you can be translated as there was, and kuang ke is a sort of self-claimed name by a high rank official. His name is He Zhizhang. Uh, call his name. How is call? I'll give you the title. Er is you. Zhe is banished. Banished from a place. And Xian. Xian is quite interesting word. It's the immortal. Because in Taoist religion, people believe that if you practice Taoism and you practice the martial art, and you take medicinal herbs and all that, you can become an immortal. And Ren, of course, it's person. So Xian Ren is one word that you can translate as the immortal. So if you put the two lines together, it can be translated as, Years ago, He Zhizhang, the self-styled madman, called you the banished immortal. So that's how famous Li Bai was. And the next two lines, which is absolutely amazing. Let me just read it. 比落金风雨 Shen. B is the brush, and Luo is the brush land on the paper, and Jing is a shock or startled, and Feng is wind, and Yu is rain. Shi Cheng Qi Gui Shen. So Shi is poem, and Cheng is complete or finished. Qi is like a weep or cry. Gui is ghost and Shen is spirit. So if you put these two lines together, it means your writing is as sweeping and startling as a storm, and your finished poem makes ghost and spirit weep. What does this mean? Well, uh, it just means that uh, Li Bai's poetry has the cosmetic power, that it was so powerful, sweeping as a storm, and he, it was so touching uh, or moving, it actually make the, the, the spirit and ghost cry. So that's how powerful Li Bai's poem is. You know, even today when Chinese were saying some masterpiece of literature, they would say, well, you know, Jing Feng Yu, Qi Gui Shen means the masterpiece was as shocked as a storm and would make the ghost and spirit weep. So that was how he regarded Li Bai's poetic talent. And the next two lines, So Sheng is sound and Ming is name. When you put the two together, like Sheng Ming, it means reputation. And Chong is from, and Chi is here, and Da is great. Gu, gu is quite interesting. It's, it's the sound of flowing water, like a gu, gu, gu sort of water flowing. And mo is like a, a sinking under the water. Uh, yi zhao is like a, yi is one, and zhao is like a morning. 
And when you say yi zao, you can just translate as one day. Shen is stretch, but it's also when you are under the water and when you stress, you get out of the water. So shen here is like emerged from obscurity. So when you put these two lines together, it means one day plugged from obscurity from that time on, your reputation become great. So I sort of reverse the order of these two lines because it makes more sense because he was recommended to the emperor and then you know he was appointed immediately as a high rank official, which many people would take years to study and pass through the civil service examination and be promoted to that position. So Levi was just like, his rise was like on the rocket just right to the sky. Next line, uh, it talks about like how he got the, uh, you know, the, the favor from the emperor. So, Wen Chai Cheng Shu Wo Liu Chuan Bi Jue Lun. Wen is literary uh, or literature, and Chai is brilliant. Literary means the colorful light. And Cheng is like receiving, but here it's more like a winning over. Shu is like a special, and Wu usually from someone above you, or like you were treated really very nicely, and so it's a favor. And Liu is flow, and Chuan is transmitting or transmit. And B is must. Jue Lun, Jue is actually cutting off or have no match. And Lun is like uh, same kind of people. So if you put the two lines together, it means your literary brilliance when the emperor's favor and your influence is certainly unsurpassed. And this is how highly Du Fu regarded Li Bai's brilliance. So this is a excerpt I cited from one of Dufu's poem. The second poem I choose to explain today is called uh, Expressing My Feeling or Qian Huai. Dufu wrote this poem when he heard that Li Bai had passed away in 762. So in this poem, he sort of recalled how much fun they had when they were traveling together. And he also recounted how excellent a swordsman Levi was and how generous he was a friend. So it's quite different from the first one because this is about Levi's character rather than his literary achievement. Let's have a look at that. So I'm just going to count like five couplets from this very, very long poem. Let's have a look. Bai Ren Chou Bu Yi Huang Jin Qing Yu Wu. So Bai is white and Ren is blade. Chou is like a revenge and Bu Yi, Bu is not and Yi is justice. So when you put these two together, it just means injustice. Huang Jin Qing Yu Wu. So Huang is yellow. Huang is matching the Bai in the first line. The yellow match the white. Jin is gold, and Qing is gave all away. Here is like bottom up your pocket. So you gave away all your gold. And Yu Wu is have or not, means that you know no matter how much you have, you just gave it all to your friends. So if you put these two lines together, it means the white blades revenge injustice and yellow gold is given to friend without reservation. This is very much of the Levi's character. He used to squander a hundred thousand pieces of gold in one year. When he got the money from the emperor, he doesn't really want to save it. He just wants to spend it all on his friend. And the next one actually was commenting on Levi's swordsmanship. Sa ren hong chen li bao da zai si xu. So sa is kill. And Ren is someone or a person, and Hong is red, Chen is dust, and Li is inside, and Bao Da is returning a favor or retribution for a favor or for an insult. So Bao Da is just retribution. Zai is within, Si Xu is a moment, like a very short period of time. So when you put these two together, you can translate as the knight errant kill someone in the marketplace. Hongchen is in Chinese usually refer to a place that has lots of people, lots of traffic. So I think it would be fitting to translate it as the marketplace. 
and deals out retribution swiftly. So this is also describing Levi's character because Levi used to claim that he killed someone when he was traveling around or given the character Levi was that he often get drunk and he's quite impulsive and emotional. So it's not hard to imagine that he got into a fight and someone got killed. It's not very good. Yi yu gao li bei lun jiao ru jiu lu so yi is uh, like a remember, recall, and yu is with someone. And gao here is a gao shi. He's also a friend of Li Bai, a quite well-known poet of the Tang Dynasty. And Li, of course, refer to Li Bai. Bei is actually a, a way sort of referring to a generation. And lun jiao is a quite an interesting word. Well, I translate it as make friends. But for the Chinese, when you try to make a friend, the first thing you do is that you introduce yourself and then you sort of tell them how old you are so that you can organize who's older and who's younger so that you can address each other. Like Du Fu would call Li Bai Li Xiong or Xiong Zhang. It's like a, a big brother or something. So you have to tell each other's age. So Lun is actually sorting out. So Lun is sorting out the ages so that you can become friends. So it's just, you know, generally making friends. And Ru is Yinter. And of course, Jiu is wine. And Lu is quite interesting. Lu is when you go to a bar or a restaurant, they, they would have a hunter. And here, Lu is actually made of mud or made of brick. So it's a earthen wine bar. So. Jiu Lu is an earthen wine bar. So if you translate this two line, it can be translated as I recall the meeting with Li Bai and Gao Shi and become friends by a earthen wine bar. And the next line sort of talking about how they were. So Liang Gong Zhuang Zhao Shi De Wo Se Fu Yu so Liang is uh, the two, and Gong is a honorary title for people who are senior to you, not in generation, but in age. So here, because both Li Bai and Gao Shi was older than Du Fu, so he referred them as Gong, so the two gentlemen. Zhuang here is actually, usually Zhuang would be translated as a strong, but it also referring that you are good at something. So here is actually be good at something. And Zhao Shi is quite an interesting word because Zhao is kind of OG that it was a very nice pattern that people used to paint it on their beam or on their sword or other ultimate like a jade. So it kind of become a decoration, sort of a sign of being decorated. When you say Zhao Shi means it's like a beautiful thought. And here it is referring to as literary talent. De is get, uh, and wo here it's associated with a color, so it's like a my. And se is colors. And the fu yu, uh, fu is actually like putting on the uh, makeup. Uh, in the Tang Dynasty or early dynasty, the Chinese man used to put on makeup. So fu yu is a kind of making uh, you know your your face look better like what I did today for myself. So fu yu can be translated as excited expression. So the color is not the makeup. It's because they you know they they were so literally Thailand they probably composing poem on the spot and do forgot really excited. So if you put these two together, it's not a literary translation, but it's a good interpretation. So the two gentlemen were excellent literary talent, putting color on my face with excitement. So that's how he feels when he was talking about poetry with these two gentlemen. And the next couple is, uh, is talking about their tours or their outings. Qi han deng chui tai, huai gu shi ping wu. So qi, many people probably heard about that. It's the qi, the energy and the breath that you have. And han, when you say han, usually referring when you are drinking, you haven't been drunk yet, but you're really, really having a fun time with the wine. You just, you know, have a very, very good feeling. So qi han actually means that you are drunken in your high energy. 
So I'm just going to say while well, in high spirit, apparently. And Deng is climb, and Chui Tai is a ancient platform, which was coming from like uh, the warring uh, old spring autumn period. There's this ancient musician who were really well known at the time, and uh, and he was supposed to have performed on this platform. So the platform was built to commemorate this great musician. His name is Shi Kuang. So Huai is recall, and Gu is of course ancient time, and Shi is like a seeing, looking, or viewing, and and Ping Wu Ping is flat, Wu is applying with grass. So Huai Gu Shi Ping Wu. So if you translate these two lines, you can translate them as in high spirit. We ascended this great platform, recalling ancient times with a view of this huge plain. So this is the、uh, great time that、uh, Du Fu had with Li Bai. So this is what I had for today. If you like the content, please subscribe my channel. And in my next video, I would talk、uh, about the two poem done by Li Bai and the one that he sent to Du Fu. So if you're interested in the content of my video, please check out my channel. And if you like the content, please subscribe my channel. Otherwise, thank you for viewing my video.